created for changes, chosen for greatness. All things are possible, be all you can be in Christ. Maximize your life. Sunday morning here in Sunderland. Welcome to Max Life on Spark Sunderland. I'm your host, Dr. Peter Digby, and my co host is Pastor Theodora Adigby. On this program, we use character studies to learn about life, our human condition, and responses to events and circumstances. And with the help of our distinguished guests, we explore ways in which we can maximize our lives by learning from these stories. Welcome to Max Life. We have two very special guests this morning. Tona Okpara is area manager for Pharmacy Express. Uh, he's a performance poet passionate about young people and Christian apologetics. Tuna, you're welcome. Thank you. He's also a graduate of Sunland University. Benoit Musi is a pharmacist for Avenue Pharmacy in Sunderland. He's a music director and is passionate about people and words. He loves guiding young people to become the best they can be. Welcome, Benoit. Thank you very much. And today we want to uh, really establish some of our passion for Max life. Studying about characters, learning through biographies, looking at people's lives in the Bible. Several uh, characters are listed in the Bible and their lives are explored through several stories. I want to learn from, from these stories. I have here an extract from uh, a clergyman from the U.S., and it seems to sum up, as it were, I think what we're about to discuss on this program today. And i like to read it before I you know, bring in my guests and, and my co-host to uh, talk about character and why, why, why do we need to do character studies? Uh, how do we learn from character studies? How do we maximize our lives by looking at other people's lives and you know, looking at their mistakes and looking at their strengths and so on and so forth? How do we learn from that? This man, Harry Emerson Fosdick, he, he was an American clergyman who lived between 1879 and 1969. He was professor of practical theology at Union Theological Seminary. He was pastor at New York Riverside Church, and he was actually made famous by his radio program, National Vespers. And he wrote this um, article I'm just going to read. Anyone who cares about character must care also about social conditions. For every unfair economic situation, every social evil left to run its course means ruin to character. And the God of the Bible, because he cares supremely for personal life at its best, is zealously in earnest about social justice. His prophets blazed with indignation at all inequality. And his son made the common kingdom when God's will will be done on earth, the center of his message. To fellowship with this earnest purpose of God is what we are all summoned to. God believes in the glorious possibilities of life on earth. He's counting on us to put away the sins that hold the kingdom back and to fight the abuses that crush character in men. To believe in God, therefore, the God, 
who is fighting his way with his children up through ignorance, brutality, and selfishness to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness, is no weekly comfortable blessing. It means joining a moral war. It means devotion. It means sacrifice. Its spirit is the cross. And its most motive and undiscourageable faith. And our underlying assurance that this war for a better world can be won. It's not simply that it can be done. But our faith that God is. And that he believes that it can be done. When we pray, we say, your kingdom come. And we are full of hope about the long sacrificial struggle for the purpose behind and through it all is first of all God's. Our earnestness is but an echo of his. At a time in the world when <coughs> in Britain the parliament is debating Brexit, in America there's a shutdown and threats of impeachment uh, all across the Middle East. The you know Khashoggi issue is there in, 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 in Syria, withdrawal and all the, the entire world seems to be in, in, in turmoil. And that passage seems to tell us the importance of character at this time. So let me start with my guest by asking, what is character? And why is character so important? I'll start with a quote from one of my favorite um, apologetics, C.S. Lewis. He said, A ship at sea must answer three important questions. One, how to avoid sinking. It's a matter of personal ethics. Two, how not to bump into other ships. A matter of social ethics. And more importantly, why is it at sea in the first place? normative eth ethics character is the core of who we are it's the outflow of life at work it's the outflow of life in relationship with other people so in essence your character is what defines how you relate to people and how you conduct yourself in, in various aspects of, of life and so it is the fundamental um, it's fundamental issue of every individual life that they can answer who I am at my core is truly that that is your character and it just flows out in, in different issues of, on life fantastic from, from Tuna mm. well I also think part of character I, I agree first of all with everything Tuna has said but also I think part of character is it goes beyond uh, what other people see or experience in your presence mm. um, a lot of character has to do with who you are alone mm. behind closed mm. doors when nobody is seeing you who are you in your thoughts who are you in your mind um, because uh, like somebody said I think it was uh, a preacher I was listening to he said 99% uh, of what you do is a reflex and what is it a reflex from what is on, what is on the inside of you so I believe character is mostly primarily what happens on the inside of us when we are alone because what other people see can be can be a show it can be hidden it can mm -hmm. be it can all be a lie but your character is who are you when you are alone when you cannot lie to anybody else when you cannot hide from anybody else so yes well pastor yeah. Theo has been a solicitor for more than 30 years so let's hear the legal <laughs> <laughs> if um, there's a legal perspective to character taking the comments of both our guests, um, I can see a delving into the issues of reputation mm. because sometimes we mix them up. Reputation is what the people what people think about you, the impressions you make on people mm. and mm. all that. While character is your essence, like uh, Benoit said, it's what you are in the secret. Um, one writer rightly puts it this way and if I'll take our time um, I'll just read uh, we'll still look at it later but he said something towards the end of his um, article he says reputation is what men say about you on your tombstone <laughs> character is what angels say about you before the throne of God mm -hmm. 
that's deep and then we will probably look at it later <laughs> in the next segment but at the end of the day really character is determined by your belief some basically it inf- your belief inf- will inf- de- definitely influence your character hmm. that's the way you you react the way you believe your temperament your tolerance and all that will come to play this is very interesting because uh, i was just checking the dictionary now and the synonyms for for character actually covers both both of what we've been talking about reputation and then the internal values of the belief system of a person and some of those synonyms are personality mm-hmm. nature you know sometimes we'll say oh that, he has a fantastic personality but that doesn't mean he's quite <laughs> he's a good person <laughs> or you know and somebody might not might you know look like somebody who lacks you know that vibe or you know I'm, i might have actually have a fantastic you know uh a fantastic person you know so it's disposition, disposition temperament yes temper mentality tone of mind psyche constitution makeup make stamp you know mold for the kind of person you know these are so crucial and i'm just fascinated that god believes that as christians we have a moral war to fight you know in building character and helping people become the best that they can be we'll pick this up after the the break welcome back to max life and in our introduction we had three very unique perspectives. Uh, uh, Tuna told us about uh, C.S. Lewis' quote about the ship, you know, uh, metaphorically, uh, how a ship needs to make sure it's, um, it stays afloat, <laughs> you know, and um, that is personal integrity as it were, and then make sure that it doesn't hit other ships on the sea, which is about social relationship, and then why is it in the water in the first place? Purpose, direction. And uh, Benoit came and uh, brought about uh, a new perspective of it's not so much the external as what is going on on the inside, and that is the true determinant of what character is. And when Theo looked at both, she uh, summed it up by saying, okay, all of this too or both of these perspectives are determined actually by the root belief of a person. And the truth is, whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, you have something you believe in. And whatever you believe in guides your life. Mm. And so my question is, so what determines a person's character? What are the attributes that help define someone's character well, when you look at a newborn baby mm. now you wonder where is this behavior coming from a newborn baby without anybody training him knows when to yell and even when to yell just for attention and then they do some little other things and you see them as they grow up doing certain things that nobody else will have taught them mm. so you wonder mm. This is this child's personality. And you begin to nurture the child, correct the child, give the child values. Maybe we can start looking at it from there. Mm. And sometimes you see children of the same parents. You see the 12 sons of Jacob, for instance. Mm. And they, they had different character traits. Mm. So I'm... I'm I'm expanding the question now. I, I, I have a very... You know, actually, you, you've touched on something mm. that is so profound. It's something I've been just studying recently, and that is epigenetics. <laughs> you know, you, you've, you've touched on something that is so profound that is really um, blowing Christian scientists' mind now, the issue of epigenetics and where gene suppression and things like that Mm. and you know when i began to study that i came to understand the power of blessings and causes Mm. you know because when a baby is born a baby is a blank it's a blank slate as it were 
that that brain, that child will acquire all ma- manner of things. But then, it's also made up of uh, a genetic code, mm. a genetic code that is received from both the father and the mother. Mm-hmm. And epigenetics begins to tell us about how certain genes are suppressed by behavior. Mm. So regardless of what this baby inherits from the father and mother as genetic traits, epigenetical studies are trying to show us that there are certain kinds of behavior that will suppress certain genes Mm -hmm. and will bring some to come alive. You know, and that is just amazing. That is just amazing because when you, when you study the Bible, this actually shows how spiritual things work. And so scientists now are beginning to uh, reflect on the possibilities of how powerful it is that your a behavior, apart from I mean, the, env- the environmental factors, there are cultural factors, mm-hmm. but when you behave in a certain pattern, it suppresses certain genes mm. that are negative in that person, which means it's transferred from the parents or from the grandparents. Or, but you can actually act, there are certain actions yes. you can begin to take that actually, it's not that the gene is not there. Mm. But it becomes suppressed. Mm. I, 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 you, you just, you just put a, a name <laughs> to it, epigenetics. But it's something I've been thinking about myself in the sense that, you know, th- there's a teaching um, I I attended in Newcastle, uh, where you were teaching about the word, and the power of the word from the book of Hebrews. And ever since then, I've been thinking on, and I, and I was, and I've been talking to young people, and I said, do you know we are really words? And you talked again about that we are promises of God. And what is the core of a human being is is letters. Hmm. We are just expressions of four or five uh, letters. C, G, A in in science, I'm speaking. DNA is just information. So we are just information. Hmm. So if you think about it really, um, when the Bible says the word of God goes to the core of of a human being, what does it do? It means it can go and change information, which eventually leads to uh, expression of habits when you say the wow. environment and this, this and that profound. you know and <laughs> and if you ask yourself what really what really causes somebody's character like pastor theo started by saying a baby is born and and you said it's a blank i don't i don't think a baby is blank i think a baby is really full of information mm. it's already f- just like a seed is full of information mm. but mm. the environment you plant that seed in the baby you Help put that the expression. the expression of all of all none of what is inside that that mm. seed or that child so which is why like you said again the the power of blessing the power of of speaking the right words if if we only knew how important the words we say to one another the words we express and this radio show you don't you don't know how far the words we are speaking now are going to change somebody's character because of something they've heard you don't understand the power of it which is something again you said the other day um everything that is seen comes from the unseen yes you know so if the fact that you hear something and you 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 have a, a feeling or you have a, a desire to eat something or you smell something, it's all based on information. How is your brain uh, managing or processing these words you have spoken? So maybe I can conclude to the question is, what determines the character is the words, is words. Mm. What words are you hearing? What words are inside of you, whether are suppressed you exposed or expressed? To? You know, it's words, which is probably why I'm so passionate about <laughs> words. <laughs> I, I I agree. And I think um, the other aspect of it is that you were saying about uh, behavior, suppressing a dominant gene or giving expression to a, a suppressed gene. I completely agree. But then where does the behavior come from? The behavior comes from a belief mm-hmm 
right? Behavior, belief breeds behavior. Mm. So we only do things that we believe with a clear conscience. We can sometimes break our belief and do something we don't believe for whatever reason, which is a lack of character, mm. which we, we might come on to. But our belief is what allows us to, with a clear conscience, with with without feeling guilty about something, do uh, a particular behavior and feel this is me this is mm-hmm. myself mm. and so that belief is changed or um argumented so increased or you know kind of giving given a backing by not just by words mm-hmm. you know but by also things that we see because things that we see are an expression of someone's thoughts and someone's spoken yeah. words so they the, can the, be the gates the gates yes our senses the, right the mind yeah. the, the eyes the ears what we see what we feel but also i i think in the society we live in now i think a lot of behavior is uh, and maybe this is where we're coming to with character study is that young people are doing subconscious character studies by looking at celebrities and mm. looking at things that they see on social media as a pattern of behavior that they should also emulate, emulate, yeah. exactly and so what we do or what you you do in this radio show with character study is something that people don't know they're subconsciously doing all the time mm. every mm. day mm. with mm. with facebook with, with social media and, and and we can see it having effect on mental health yes that's um, what's because the to look at, mm. yes. yeah because you see people uh, supposing that this should be the image they should have of mm-hmm. themselves but it, it it's not in them it's not truly them it's not what they really mm-hmm. believe and there's a conflict there's a conflict in themselves and that's what causes anxiety because you 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 can't you can't resonate you can't kind of put these two together they're not they're not they're not a piece and that's what causes you know this all this sometimes can Internal. cause this type of yeah, yeah, a lot of internal chaos. You know, I there, there's something I I picked up there, which is that um, when belief becomes behavior, it becomes an expression of of faith and mm. character. You know, and sometimes when we talk about faith, um, people just think it's more of a religious thing mm. but it's it, it's more than it's more than uh, religion it's actually uh, behavior yeah. which goes back to the epigenetics yeah. mm. thing yeah. you know so but w- let's pick this up when we come back welcome back to max life and it's been really interesting uh, having uh, uh, tuna benoit and uh, Pastor Theo giving us unique perspectives uh, about character. And uh, in the last segment, we talked about how um, certain attributes like our actions and behavior help to determine character. And Benoit talked about words, the power of words, words that we hear, words that we use ourselves you know how we use words to define ourselves and you know the scripture tells us a lot about words the entire book of proverbs is a lot of instruction about how forceful are right words hebrew talks about the word going into the even as far as our bone marrows yes Mm. actually words are containers Mm. words are containers of uh, I, I, I want to call that spiritual things, you know, or you know, because of ideas and of, intents, of ideas and intents, yeah. you know, and 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 so it's powerful. The words you hear, mm. the words you hear, help to create your belief system yes. about the world around you. Mm-hmm. Your belief system, in turn, will cr- create your behavior mm. or your perspective. And that perspective is transformed into an attitude that can affect your success or failure. Ex- excellent. Because I, for instance, I can tell you, I, I think I've mentioned this before, um, uh, I thought I could never understand mathematics. mathematics. Mm. And um, 
And then I had a, another challenge. I have never been fearful about things, but suddenly I had some kind of nightmare and approaching my exams. And I thought, this was for my GCSE O levels. And I thought, oh, I wouldn't be able to do anything but words. My, I had a missionary principal, Miss R.J. Pelly, and she just said, prayed with me and said, oh, we just read Psalm 23, simple as a child. And I just believed mm. that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And she said, off you go. And that was it. And I went into a private room uh, uh, to, to study. And I saw this scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm. I, you know, it was like a flasher, mm. just like you can look at my life. Yeah. And I can do all things through Christ. I've never seen it before. So I immediately wrote it on all my revision notebooks. Mm. And it was like an, a divine energy came up inside me. Mm. This is, wow. I was 15. Yes. And nobody, it's not like I've had any deep spiritual experience before. Mm. Yeah. But the words, it mm. wasn't a question of religion. Mm. It was the words. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I just had courage. I had confidence it and I went through, everything. it changed everything. I, and I was, I, I, it, it also brought wisdom. Mm. I was able to go and meet those who were good in mathematic equations. <laughs> so please, can you show me this? Can you show me that? Just before the exams. And going through the, the exam was like taking ice cream. Mm. It was smooth. It was easy. Mm. And of course, it came out with very excellent results. And so she, she's been modest. She actually had the best results <laughs> in the state. <laughs> <laughs> but it was all I can attribute it to the words that came mm. because I could have refused to even go in for the exams mm. the, out of fear. Out of fear. Mm. And I think there's something in in that chain. You, 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 you. When you said the words you receive, I think also. Again, the words you receive, what do you do with the words you receive? Like in her story just now, she says she received those words and then she wrote it down. She spoke it. So it wasn't just words spoken to her, but also the words she was speaking to herself, you know, because in order to believe it. Exactly. Yes. You know, which then will affect your character. So it's not just the words spoken to you, but also the words you speak to yourself. The words you write down. What do you believe in? What do you say to yourself? Yes. Which, is, which brings you back to what I said in the beginning. Who are you when you are alone? Hmm. Because when you're alone, you speak to yourself. Yes. You know, so... Yes, you know, th this, this is where but you the see power of social media mm. becomes something uh, that is important for us to talk about. Yes. But you see, it's also, as we're talking now, answers the queries that people raise against God. Mm. Because God said, let us make man in our own image in our own character, in our own image, and they will be like us. But then, God has spoken. What mm. have you, what are you saying to yourself? Mm. Mm. He says, you are blessed. You will be a blessing. Yes. Mm. And then you say, well, uh, uh, God has not done this for me. That is why this has not happened. No, God has spoken. Mm. His words are alive and well. It depends on are you receiving it? Yes. Have you received the word of God? And if you have received it, what are you doing with it? Mm. Are you enforcing it? Yes. I think the challenge, the greatest challenge right now is that there are so many things competing for our attention. That's right. Social media is competing. Games are competing. Mm. All kinds of things are competing for that space yes. within us. And all those things have a powerful impact on not just our behavior, mm. but also our children. You yes, said something. Yes, you yes, said yes, something. You, you said it's something about, about it. it's, it's something I, I learned at university, which um, because in the past I used to smoke, and I, I as a young boy, I used to like the smell of cigarette smoke, and I never knew why. I just thought it's something I just like. Um, but at uni, we were studying um, what was in 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 cigarette smoke, the content. And there's a there's a there's a compound called acrolein, which is just one of the thousands or hundreds of thousands of uh, chemicals which you can find in rocket fuel that takes mm. rockets to space. It's contained in cigarette smoke. And what that little thing is just three. It's just like a V. What it does, it it inserts itself into the double helix of the DNA. Mm. 
and changes it mutates the mm. human dna now that gene that mutation may not affect the person there it may not lead to a cancer in this person person x but that changed gene obviously is passed on to the child mm. because in we are like i said we are just information that information is passed and then you see children born with diseases you don't know where they come from people blame god you see children with cancers they've not done anything they've never smoked a day in their life but they have traits of people who have smoked it happens the same with medication some children are born addicted to some medication because their parents were on that medication and they have to be weaned off mm. you know it's something we see all the time so it's not just like you say it's not just talking in the air it is real biology it is real information being transferred science, science. it's science Fact. from one individual to the next and the other person has no choice the mm. child does did not make a choice in choosing this gene you know it just happens because of the choice of the parent mm. and you see at the end of the day this still brings us back to the scriptures that the word of god has never failed <clears throat> he we have a responsibility he did not create humanoids he did not create robots we mm. have a will yes. which we must exercise mm -hmm. and we can't sit back to accuse god of not all, doing all, all something the all the time oh why why this is uh, gone to the, uh, the angels have received him of oh, and all that and all that what are we doing mm. Mm, mm, mm. food for thought yeah okay. and um pastor Theo just made a comment about god saying let us make man in our own image and i've always found the world the word selfie to be very interesting <laughs> <laughs> because we're made in the image of God, yet we prefer our image to the mm. image of God. Mm. Just as an aside, you know. That's interesting. Because, because the but truth... It's not an aside. This, this is it, it's a very profound, profound It is. Thought. But the truth is, we, 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 we're looking more at, like the Bible says, at the creature. We prefer the creature. We prefer mm. the images of other people just like us. They really are just like us. Mm. Than the image of God. What's the image of God? Jesus Christ said, give to Caesar what is Caesar um, and give to God what is God. The man never asked a follow-up question in that interaction with Jesus Christ because he should have asked because he knew what was Caesar's because Jesus said the coin is there. Yeah, it's there on Caesar's. He should have asked, what is God's? And Jesus would have said to him, you are God. God's image is on you. You are God. And, and you know, the but imprint of God. The yes. imprint of God. Just is like the imprint of Caesar is on, the, on coin. the coin. Exactly. And that is what overrides any change in DNA that might have been passed on, like Benoit was talking about, from your father, from your mother. You now have the choice. You now have the ability to change those genes in yourself, if you like, by what you decide to believe, mm. by what you decide. You, you can, you can sit back and you can be... To. Absolutely. You can sit back and you'd be happy to say, this is who I am. You know, that's just the way I was born. Yes, but, you know, there's so many other people born in the same way. You make a choice to say, right, I want to carry on this path or I want to change it. It is in your hands. It is absolutely in your hands. That's the power that God has given to us is the power of choice. Fantastic. Of choice. And that explains why very often you find people of, you know, uh, low background, you know, come up to achieve great things, mm. you know, people that regardless of the circumstances, regardless Choice. of the uh, environment, regardless of the background. Even regardless of disabilities. Remember Vijik? Ha, honestly, regardless of disability, mm. they make the choice and they become successful. Yeah. Mm. And in the next section, we're going to look at the power of biographies and studying biographies. Okay. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Mark's Life, coming to you from Spark, Sunderland. And um, I have with me two experienced pharmacists here and um, a legal luminary <laughs> 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 who also happens to be a pastor. And the, the fact is, new reports show the effect of social media mm. on uh, young people people on behavior affecting character what are your experiences you know what are your experiences and how do you think from this program we can actually help to guide people i know benua you are passionate about guiding young people mm. to 
get the best yes. out of them. And uh, Tuna too, actually, you've worked. You worked in London many years in you know youth building mm-hmm. and yeah. young people and all that stuff. This is really crucial because a, a lot of young people are not uh, possibly fully formed in terms of their character mm. and they need role models. Li- character is a lifetime development. You know, so r- mm. I mean, character is a lifetime thing. You know, they need role models. Uh, and sometimes there's such pressure, mm. you know, to just be like mm. um, your idol, as it were, mm. you know. And what we are talking about, image, mm. I love that that expression. That even though we are made in the image of God, now we love selfies yeah. so much. We even have <laughs> selfie sticks. We even have selfie <laughs> sticks, you know. <laughs> so how do you think we can really start to talk about this? How do we start to have conversations about personality, character development, away from all the you know, deceitfulness of social mm-hmm. media and Instagram and stuff. I think again, it, it goes down and it boils down to your belief, what you believe about yourself. And the f- <clears throat> the first, the first belief about yourself is where you're from, because it is important. If 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 you're made in the image of God, then one, you're unique. Your mate, and and that's there's one you. No one else can be. Re- no one else can replace you. You're irreplaceable. However, if you're not, if you're a you're a, a product of chance, matter, and time, then of course you need to fit in with the popular crowd. You need to fit in with society to be able to survive. Um, a survival of the fittest will, you know, yeah. will determine. If not, you will be left behind. And so that will be the starting point. Yeah, that, you know, <laughs> survival of the fittest, this is where we've come come to. But if God made us in his image, we are unique and special to him. We don't need to try and impress any other person to to be like any other person because we, we cannot be replaced. It's such a strong point for a Christian mm. that you know that, you know what, I am who God wants me to be. It and gives your, you your, so con- so much your, confidence. Your, your desire and passion is to be the best of that person. Of you. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. You 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 can only try and improve you, not try and be somebody else. Yes. Fantastic. And the instruments of improving you are all there Word, in the holy book. Mm. Words yeah. that you can speak. <laughs> your true identity. They are all over the scriptures mm. that you can speak to yourself and you can stand tall. Hmm. without I'm not talking about pride but you when you know your true identity and you know your true origin and you know who is for you hmm. and back, to backbone and, uh, yes you 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 have a backbone <laughs> to stand because many people don't have character anymore they they run with reputation hmm. because they act according to their environment right yeah. somebody who ordinarily may n- not smoke or drink but because Peer he pressure. has come to the university and he wants to make friends or she wants to make friends. Peer pressure. Mm. Now, just start smoking. start smoking and may not be able to handle it. Mm. Mm. Because their makeup was not built for that. Um, I think it's... If, you, if, I, if I go back to your initial question, how do you begin to have a conversation about this? I think it's important to realize that there is already a conversation. You know, in mental health care... In even in 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 just healthcare as a whole, uh, the hospitals, the doctors, everybody's already talking about the negative impact. I was reading uh, something. I was discussing earlier on with you. I was reading something on BBC, you know, which is open to everybody about the impact social media is having on little children's mental health, yes. and there was a direct mm. correlation with social media exposure, the amount of time spent on social media. And their mental health status. Depression. Depression, ex- to be specific. And um, the thing about mental health is it's a delicate thing to handle. It's very delicate. Nobody knows another mm. mind, another man's mind, another child's mind. You have little children committing suicide at the age of six. They know nothing about life, but already know how to take life away from themselves. They already know what 
the number of paracetamols or the number of this to take to commit suicide, which way to jump over the bridge, where to jump. And, you know, from a very young age, being bullied, there's bullying happening. And, and, and if you think about the whole selfie conversation we're having earlier on, it's filtered. We have mobile phones with filters. With We, we have now cats' uh, ears on dogs' noses, dogs' tongues, on a human face to make you look more like an animal distorted images and that is what a lot of society is running with a distorted image of who we really are mm. you know and like Pastor Theo was just saying reputation Jesus made himself a man of no reputation mm. when I see that I say to myself why then do I want to have if this man who everybody in history venerates whether it doesn't matter what your religion is they know he was a great teacher they know he was a perfect man they know this 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 let's not even be religious he existed he was killed and he he is still spoken about thousands of years if only for that reason he was a man of who didn't want to have a reputation why then do i so want to be to have a good reputation or to be seen in a certain way why do i not also want to be and it's like if it goes back again to the words i have heard the words of affirmation or mm. the words of breaking down or the words that have built my mindset mm. which the bible says when you become born again you must renew your mind mm. your mental health you must renew your mind That's it. i think it's important also to to say it, it is not it is not to say that social media is wrong no no it's not to say that social media is wrong it is it is what you it's behold choice. and how you define yourself even before you're beholding those things, in what like you talked about filter, what 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 filter are you using to uh, interpret those images you're seeing? Mm. You know, are you looking at those images and saying, "That's what I need to become like," or are you looking at those images and saying, "Wow, that you know, good for that person. Mm. That's just not I me. Am. I am this person, and we're both that, comfortable that in our race." That comes to value system. Yes, value system. You know, that comes to value system and. A lot of times, value systems are a function of the culture, mm. you know. And what we have seen over, you know, several years is uh, an emerging culture, a changing culture, a consumerist culture, mm, yeah. a culture of, um, you know, celebrities and so on and so forth. Um, a culture where people are judged more by how much money they can make, make. you know. And that has an impact also. That has such, mm. you know, an impact on people. Mm. Whereby it's no, no more, in the past, it used to be integrity. You know, yeah. my family, character. my family name. Mm. You know, you can't drag my family name. Like you say, it's culture world. because there's certain cultures now in the Far East still that that is really important That's for yes. them. Yes. Probably a little bit sometimes to the extreme, but, but still, some the culture, like you say, has changed. Has changed. Has changed. So, so who, who who sets the culture? Then who who is who determines what the culture is? And that's why there's variation. You see, like um, that quotation I I read at the very beginning uh, by this uh, man, um, Harry Emerson Fosdick. He, f- f- to my mind established very clearly that there is the power of light and there is the power of darkness. Mm. And these two are constantly at, at war. war. And so everyone, we have, we have a responsibility. Mm. We have a responsibility to try and change the culture around us. That's right. We have the responsibility to try and apply these words. And I, I tell people, when you wake up in the morning, just decide... Lord, today help me to say something to somebody mm. that can change their life, that can make for them good. happy, they can for good make them, you know, just look at life in a different way. Mm. And if all of us start doing that, we will change the culture. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, wow. We have to stop here. I can't <laughs> believe we've just finished an episode of Max Life with Tona and Benoit. And um, We'll, we'll have them back here in the studio next week. Um, but I want to say a very big thank you to uh, Pastor Theo, my co-host, and uh, Benoit, and, uh, thank you for and, having and us. Tona. Thank you. Uh, you can access all our past episodes of Max Life on podcast. 
You can find us on Spotify and iTunes by searching Chapel of Light or my name, Dr. P Peter Digbie. You can also follow us on Spark website, on our website, www.scli.org.uk, on YouTube and on Facebook and Instagram. We would love to hear from you. So please, we've enjoyed some questions that have been sent to us and they would like to take on those questions and give you feedback. Uh, if you want to send us an email, you can send it to info at scli.org.uk. Uh, uh, I will ask very, very quick uh, word of prayer from our two guests, from uh, Benoit and, and Tuna. Till we see you next week, I just have a quick word of prayer to our listener uh, right now. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to speak words of life. We thank you for the opportunity to speak words that matter. We thank you, Lord, that we know that you are the one who is going to make a change and change the minds of those who need to be changed. We thank you because we know you are the Alpha and Omega, and we give you all the glory. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we just pray for everyone listening, and we ask that truth truth oh lord will be revealed to them even through what we've spoken today but that lord ultimately you will reveal truth to them that they will be able to live according to that truth in jesus name from pastor theo and myself and our two guests we say have a wonderful sunday, sunday. morning god bless you created for changes chosen for greatness all things are possible beyond you can be Oh.